After 60 spirited minutes and then an overtime that was at times exhilarating, exasperating, but always entertaining. Rangers come away with a 2-1 win. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios. John Giannone, Henrik Lundqvist, Steve Valiquet. I know how you would feel, Henrik, when that was happening in front of you. You watched that on television, those 64 minutes. What goes through your mind after wow. that? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. But we talked about going into the third period a 1-1 game, I thought the Rangers played a much better game in the third period. Yeah. Smarter with the puck, more patient, and it paid off. And Igor, he was standing on his head, and overtime was so entertaining yeah. to watch. <laughs> and uh, I think that was hockey at, at its best. I can't think of a win that was that improbable. Um, it's almost like around the 10-minute mark of the third period, it started to look like the team started to believe, like we can actually pull this off. Right, because for most of that game, I can't say that I thought the Rangers were going to win that hockey game. And now the narrative around that game completely changes. The energy in the room changes, and the belief system within the group changes, because that could have easily been a, a five-one score the other way. And now you've got nothing to play for in the third period. It's a credit to the coaching staff and the players to keep that thing going. But I think also that's the key when you play a game, not to overreact, and and you will have different swings mm -hmm. within the game so when you do have a good moment you need to cash in and they scored a big goal and in the second period they didn't get hurt they, yeah. they left the period at a tight game even though they were outplayed outshot and I think that alone gives them a lot of confidence going into the third okay boys we're in a good position here still mm -hmm. so uh, I think Toronto felt more pressure going into the third period even though they played a lot better that's a, that's the point right there because this team's already feeling pressure in their market and for them, I think that scoring in overtime meant the difference between a miserable day tomorrow and those demons haven't gotten away from this team yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, this narrative's been around this team for a long time. And uh, look, that loss last year to the Montreal Canadiens in the first round is still something. Those demons are still lurking around Yeah, it's 54 years now without a Stanley Cup. And those we're talking about it's been yeah. 17 years since they've gotten past the first round. Won a playoff round, exactly, yeah. And on, on tonight, when you consider what the Rangers did on Saturday, one goal against in Montreal, go into another difficult barn in Canada, one goal against... Steve, they win it on a night where they took 54 face-offs and won exactly 13 <laughs> of them. Yet the last one that they had to take, they won and got the goal. Yeah, and isn't that a playoff of what we were talking about uh, Saturday before the Montreal game where last season they were net negative on the face-off goals and this, this, you know, you're getting into the first bit of this overtime and it's a big save on Matthews. Truba then gets the puck here, and he fumbles it for a split second, but Campbell's recovery is outstanding. And then you've got another wrap here from Matthews on Shesterkin. He's holding his ground. He's able to play and track down. Shesterkin gets back here, stops Matthews once and then twice, and he's out of position, Hank, but he's battling. <laughs> you I mean, you look at Matthews. Zone. He can't believe that puck doesn't go in, but great job by Truba to hold him up. Because it was a wide open net on the second play there. Face off win for Panarin. <laughs> for the Panarin and goal. And there it is. That's all he needs. You know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, you saw a lot of uh, puck movement from a lot of different guys throughout the night. Uh, Brad was, was pretty good. But in the end, he was the difference with that big play. And, yeah. and that's just what he does. Yeah, and we told you in the pregame, Artemi Panarin had never in his career gone the first four games of a season without a goal. He still hasn't. You called it. I, nah, I, I said it anyway. <laughs> yeah, he's in Canada. He didn't hear me say it. But nonetheless, Artemi Panarin with his first of the year, a two-point night for Mika Zibanejad, who now has five points in four games. And the Rangers get the win. And you know what? Tip your cap and then some to the goaltender because you said it. 16 saves in a second period where the ice was enormously tilted and then what Igor Shesterkin was able to do in a more stout third period but especially in overtime just a magnificent performance we talked before the game started when you're down two forwards of your top six Kako and Strom do you maybe need your goalie to steal a game I got a feeling he might have done that <laughs> Yeah, I think so, and especially the second period. I think in the first and in the third, yeah. it was a different type of game. Toronto didn't have as much time with the puck crossing the blue line as they did in the second period, and, and we talked about how hard it is to defend, and as a goal, you have to be so patient when the Toronto guys come in and then make a loop and, and wait for that third, third and, and even second guy come in. So first, third period, a lot better, uh, but overall, obviously, Igor... 
he played a huge part yeah. in this. And one. Steve, you'd like to point out how positionally sound he is when he's on in that situation. And it seemed like with what Hank was saying, the misdirection they play and the, the hitting the trailer, he just always seemed to be so positionally sound tonight. Yeah, and I think you'd agree the hardest thing about being a goalie some nights is not getting any shots and then having a major breakdown and facing a breakaway. But he was warm in this game. He got warm early. And I thought in the first period, the Rangers did a nice job of, on a few open looks, giving that clear shot to him where he could see it. And then you could see how he started to come out and challenge, and he was able to show up on his feet. I think that's really important for his game, that he can adjust, come out on his feet, and then make second and third saves because he's able to. He can scramble out of being up. And you see the breakaway saves, and you see the rebound play fighting through traffic. Mm. And there's not too many errors in his game here that caused additional shots. I thought he managed the game really well. He slowed it down when he could, and that's always important when you're getting peppered. But I think facing this amount of action, Hank, you know what it's like. It's like you get into a game and you just want more because you're so warm and you're feeling so good about yourself. Yeah, well, I, I think in a game like this, you, you need a confident goal. There's no question about it because there were so many great A chances. So he was feeling it, and in the end, that, that was the difference. Uh, but I got to give credit to the team as well. I, I feel like other than the uh, second period, they mm -hmm. played a really good road game simple that enforce it but we like i said we discussed it in, in the second period there how they got away from it a little bit and we saw a hank header from we Igor. did uh, <laughs> uh, put to rest once and for I all love why it. that's a smart thing to do because those of us who have gotten a concussion before that's not a smart thing to do right. why did you do it and why do goalies do well it? to me it was about staying in control and see the puck all the way in and and when you cover your eyes to catch the to uh, catch it, you you lose sight of it. So I felt more in control to to use the head and see the puck all the way in. And the trick is to make sure the puck goes up and back and not straight back to you guys there because that that's gonna hurt. So there's a there's a strategy to a header. Absolutely. Really yeah. interesting. Well, you should we saw have seen Eagles. Jim Ramsey. He used yeah. to go nuts on the bench when you would do that. Go yeah. nuts. I remember Stop the first couple that. times he did it, the coaches did the same thing. I'm like, what, what did we just see? I know he's European. I know they do that in yeah. football, the, you guys, all the time. The, the but they grew up playing soccer, that, but that was yeah. not the reason why. Thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> the only Rangers goal in the first 60 minutes, five on five, came from Mika Zibanejad, and it happened late stages of the first period, Steve, on a play where he was on the ice for about five seconds before the goal was scored. Yeah, and that was actually the first four-check pressure the Rangers had themselves. They were facing an onslaught of Toronto's four-check in the first period, but it was helpful. You know, you've got to have guys like Reeves coming in hot. You could see how Campbell didn't have a time to have a handle on his stick, and that's why he gives that away. Good pursuit here from Hunt, and now you're winning a wall battle, or at least putting pressure on Tavares to give it away with Zibanejad coming off the bench. He's got the eye for the slot area. He's really in a triangle here. This goes clean in. It doesn't hit a Toronto stick. At first, a lot of folks, even us, because Lundqvist had a moment in the first period that we thought went in, but it was the second time that we saw that in the first period, but it went off that back camera. And uh, it's an amazing shot. It had a little bit of turn on it. Yes, it did, and, and it's so much harder to read that shot. If it's a clean shot, maybe he will make that save, but yeah. you get that little movement on the puck, it's a lot harder to pick up.